Good morning. We'll continue our discussion on the numerical problems on the shear strength of soil. Question number 5. The stresses on a failure plane in a drain test on cohesion less soil are as follows. Determine the angle of shearing resistance, major principal stress and minor principal stress for sigma 100 kPa and tau 40 kPa. So, the specifications that we get from the questions is Number one, the soil is cohesion less. Number two, sigma and tau are already given and you are asked to get the angle of rearing resistance or the angle of internal friction, major principal stress and the minor principal stress. So let's take the help of the Mohr circle. What we are given with is sigma and tau for the failure, which means you have first point here 0 0 and you have the second point here 140 sigma is 100 tau is 40 so x is 100 and y is 40 so you can connect a line from 0 passing through 140 like this it's cohesion less soil so obviously the intercept will be 0 so there's a line that passes through 0 0 and 140 and it's a straight line so from the straight line you'll get the slope slope is nothing but the angle of internal friction or the angle of shearing resistance so when you take the slope here you can see that it's nothing but 40 by 100 and from which when you take tan inverse you'll get angle to be 21.8 degrees now the next part of the question is you get the minor principal stress and the major principal stress which means you'll have to get sigma 3 and sigma 1 for which what you can do is you can drop a line like this which is perpendicular to the failure envelope and intersect the failure envelope at 140 so you'll get the perpendicular here and let that perpendicular meet the sigma axis at let's say the point is C I've marked it as star here, but let's say that C. So this distance has nothing but the radius of the Mohr circle, the one that we are interested in. So I can draw a circle with this as the radius, the distance shown in the green dotted line as the radius, and the center as this particular point. So you'll get a circle like this and the more failure envelope is tangential to that circle at this particular point. So, of course, from this Mohr circle, you'll get sigma 1 here and sigma 3 here. Values turns out to be 159 and 73, which are nothing but the major and minor principal stresses. So, in short, this is a graphical method from which you'll get sigma 1 and sigma 3 and phi when you are given with the failure sigma and 2. Next question. An unconfined cylindrical specimen of clay fails under axial stress of 5040 pounds per feet square. The failure plane was inclined at 55 degrees to the horizontal. Determine the shear strength parameters of the soil. So we'll take the help from this particular equation connecting sigma 1 and sigma 3 with the shear strength parameters phi and c. Now in the question it's defined that the test carried out was unconfined so you can say that sigma 3 is equal to 0 for unconfined stress. So obviously sigma 1 equal to 0 plus 2c tan 45 plus 5 by 2. Sigma 1 is 2c tan 45 plus 5 by 2 where sigma 1 is a major principal stress, C is a cohesion, phi is the angle of internal friction. The axial stress 5040 pound per square feet is given, which means sigma 1 is given 5040. And angle at which the failure plane is inclined to the horizontal is given, or theta which is 45 plus 5 by 2 is given as 55 degrees and from which you get phi equal to 20 degrees. 
and once you know phi equal to 20 degrees and sigma 1 already given as 5040 you can get the unknown cohesion has 1765 pounds per feet square again just like any other example that we work out and discuss in the video you should try to do and solve this question on your own and see whether you are getting an answer around 1765 question number seven a cylindrical sample of soil having a cohesion of 80 kilopascal and an angle of internal friction 20 degrees is subjected to a cell pressure or confining pressure of 100 kilopascals determine the maximum deviator stress at which a soil sample fails and also the angle made by the failure plane with the major principal plane so you are given with the confining stress or the cell pressure sigma 3 100 kilopascal cohesion is already given 80 kilopascal phi is already given 20 degrees in short you are given with the properties the shear strength parameters c and phi and you are given with sigma 3 your question is to find the maximum deviator stress or sigma 1 minus sigma 3 which is the deviator stress at which the sample fails we don't know sigma 1 we know sigma 3 we know c and phi so let's assume that the failure plane is like this at an angle theta and you are applying that sample and you are confining it under a stress of sigma 3 and let BC be the horizontal line BE be the inclined plane through which the sample fails we'll take the same example the same equation that we are familiar with connecting sigma 1 and sigma 3 in this equation sigma 1 is unknown sigma 3 is already given in the question 100 kilopascal phi is already given in the question 20 degrees c is already given in the question 80 kilopascal so you can substitute these values 100 tan square 45 plus 20 by 2 plus 2 into 80 multiplied by tan 45 plus 20 by 2 so you'll get sigma 1 as 433 kilopascals and the first part of the question is to find the maximum deviator stress now deviator stress is nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma 3 or deviator stress is extra load that you give on top of the sample sigma 3 is a confining stress that exists all throughout the circumference of the cylinder so sigma 3 plus sigma d is a major principal stress so to get sigma d you need to subtract sigma 3 plus sigma 1 and that's 433 minus 100 333 kilopascals and you are given with phi equal to 20 degrees so you already know that theta equal to 45 plus phi by 2 making the angle made by the failure plane with the major principal axis as 45 plus phi by 2 55 degrees phi is already given 45 plus 5 by 2 is 55 degrees and that's the angle made by the failure plane with respect to the horizontal or the major principal plane and graphically this question can be represented like this you have cohesion 80 you have angle of internal friction 20 so you'll have a line the more coulomb failure envelope like this and the minor principal stress is 100 and you'll have a more circle like this meeting the other end at 433 which is a major principal stress and this line which joins the center of the main center of the more circle with the failure envelope is perpendicular to the failure envelope so that line makes an angle 110 degrees with respect to the horizontal or the major principal axis at the center so since it makes 110 degrees at the center it will make 55 degrees at the circumference so this is theta and this is 2 theta as per the more coulomb more circle method question number eight a lab vein shear test was performed in an undisturbed sample of soft clay and it was found to have a failure torque of 11 newton millimeter the sample was then completely disturbed by rotating rapidly and the soil thus remolded 
failed at a torque of 4.5 newton millimeter determine the sensitivity of the clay the vein has diameter d equal to 6.3 millimeter and height h equal to 11.3 millimeters so it's a laboratory vein shear test and the dimensions d and h are given and the torque was applied on an undisturbed sample 11 newton millimeter was the observed torque at failure and when the same test was conducted on remolded sample it was found to have 4.5 newton millimeter a lower value you're asked to get the sensitivity of the clay so we know this equation shear strength is equal to torque by pi d square h by 2 plus d cube by 6 and sensitivity is the shear strength of undisturbed strength to the remolded strength so the undisturbed torque is 11 newton millimeter so you have shear strength equal to 11 by the dimensions d equal to 6.3 h is 11.3 millimeters once you have the consistent units given here you will get the shear strength as 0 0.0132 newton per mm square and the same gets applied to the remolded sample the only difference being torque is not 11 it's 4.5 the dimensions remain the same so the shear strength in the remolded case is 0 0.0054 newton per mm square and once you know s in the undisturbed and the s in the remolded state you can use this equation get the ratio and the sensitivity turns out to be 2.44 again I would suggest you to go through this example, work out on your own and try to see whether you are getting an answer of 2.44. Question number 9. Determine the shear strength in terms of effective stress on a plane within a saturated soil mass at a point where the total normal stress is 200 kN per meter square and the pore water pressure is 80 kN per meter square. The effective shear strength parameters of the soil are C dash is 16 kPa and phi dash is 30 degrees now if you are given with sigma 200 kilopascal pore pressure u 80 kilopascal c dash cohesion the effective value being 16 phi dash the effective value being 30 degrees so it's quite simple all you have to do is get sigma dash or sigma the total stress is given u the pore pressure is given from which you will get sigma dash equal to sigma minus u and you need to apply that to our shear strength equation so in effective condition shear strength s is not c plus sigma tan phi instead it's c dash plus sigma dash tan phi dash c dash is already given 16 phi dash is already given 30 and sigma dash is 200 minus 80 so you have 16 plus 120 10 30 degrees and the value of shear strength is 84 kilopascals question number 10 the stresses at failure on a failure plane in a cohesion less soil mass are sigma 10 kilopascal to 4 kilopascal or normal stress is 10 shear stress is 4 determine the resultant stress on the failure plane the angle of internal friction and the angle made by the failure plane with the major principal plane so you are given with sigma equal to 10 and tau equal to 4 kilopascal let's take the sample here you have a cylindrical sample in which you have the major principal plane which is the horizontal one you have a failure plane that's inclined to the major principal plane at theta degrees and you have sigma 3 the confining stress you have sigma 1 the the major principal stress and when you have this failure plane you have a normal stress normal to the failure plane and a shear stress tangential to the failure plane so you have sigma and tau here and you have the resultant of sigma and tau somewhere here so result, resultant is nothing but the vector addition value of sigma and tau let's try to move this like this like a free body diagram you have tau here you have sigma here and you have the resultant here 
So the resultant is nothing but r equal to root of sigma square plus tau square. That's root of 10 square plus 4 square equal to 10.77 kilopascals. Now phi, the angle of internal friction, is nothing but tan inverse tau by sigma from our definitions based on the Mohs circle and also the cylindrical sample. So you have tau and you have sigma. So you'll get tan inverse tau by sigma as 21 degrees approximately. And now the angle of inclination of failure plane to the major principal stress is nothing but theta. You have the major principles, you have the major principal plane like this and you have the failure plane like this. So the angle of inclination of the major principal plane and the failure plane is nothing but theta which is equal to 45 plus phi by 2. And now you have phi equal to 21 degrees and you'll get 45 plus 21 by 2 which is 55 degrees as the angle theta, the angle made by the failure plane with respect to the horizontal or the major principal plane.